hey, Sean, I use polyphonic wave files when I record in my F4 or in any recorder when I can, and a polyphonic wave file is just a wave file that has multiple tracks inside a single file. So when you record, if you've got two boom mics and some laughs and you know all sorts of different audio and backup channels, rather than having a separate file for every single one of those that you're syncing all of those, a polyphonic wave file is just a single file that inside of it has these different tracks and you can still break them out. They can still be stereo. They, they can still be anything. They're just all contained inside one. And I wanted to show really quickly how when you import a file like that into Final Cut, how you can pick which tracks get into your mix and things like that. So diving in, this is an interview I did and there's only two channels of audio here and it's the same mic, but one is a backup channel that's like around 12 decibels reduced just so it has uh, some safety in case somebody talks too loud. Uh, and you can see over here that this there's there's boom and there's wireless, and they're actually named that in my audio recorder. I went in and, and put in the names, and Final Cut reads those because those are that X if data is put into the wave file so that when you bring it in, if you're working with someone else, if you're handing off your audio, rather than guess or you have to slate each of these mics separately, they can just see, oh, this is the boom, this is the wireless lab, this is whatever. In this case, the wireless isn't a wireless, it's just I didn't rename the channel because I knew only I'd be working with it. But it's pretty easy here to see that both of these channels are playing. And you can see that the wave file up here is kind of big. And when I turn that off, the other audio shrinks a little bit. And it's important that you do that because by default, with a polyphonic wave file, all of the tracks are going to play and you don't necessarily want that. If you have backup channels, if you've got a boom and a lav, you can end up getting some phase cancellation if you're not careful. So make sure that it's just the track that you want. And so I have the audio for this set to be just the boom. And if I wanted to have it controlled separately and maybe jump back and forth with my multicam, all I would have to do is come down here, say add angle, and I'm just gonna copy this track down and paste it, oops, make this my active angle, paste it there. And then in this iteration, I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna turn off the main channel and turn on that backup channel. And so now I have separate tracks uh, that I can switch in my multicam clip between these two uh, audio sources, even though it's from the same file. So I have the flexibility still to do stuff without having to get in and keyframe anything or, or make different chops. I can still really easily in a multicam clip cut between these things. Um, but for me, it's just a cleaner way to work. Uh, and it's a cleaner way if you're working with other people to have all of that data come through. But just make sure if you're recording audio and sending it to someone else that you tell them it's a polyphonic wave file because if they just sync it up and they don't ever go in and look, then they're going to have extra audio and it may sound weird or muddy or not, not how you wanted it to sound. So just make sure that you, you tell people you're using polyphonic wave files. And I think they'll be happier and, uh, and everything will be a little easier. Quick one. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.